In this lab, a mixture of two unknown compounds will be subjected to both simple and fractional distillation, with the goal of separating the two compounds and learning about distillation techniques. The purity of separated materials will be analyzed using gas chromatography. You will work in groups of three or four with you and your partners working on the same unknown mixture. Each member of the group will perform a separate distillation. At least two members of the group should set up and perform a fractional distillation. Others can perform simple distillations. The major difference between the two types of distillations is the setup and glassware involved. Other differences arise from the effect that the different setups have on the quality of separation. Begin the experiment by setting up a simple or fractional distillation apparatus. In your setup, you will be using an electric heating mantle as the source of heat. In addition, you will use a rubber band to hold the adapter onto the receiver end of the condenser. The thermometer should be adjusted so that the top of the bulb is at the same height as the bottom of the sidearm of the distillation head. A graduated cylinder cooled in ice and water will be used as the receiver for the distillate. Cooling the receiver will minimize the amount of vapor in the lab. Those setting up a fractional distillation apparatus should use glass helices to pack the fractioning column. To do so, gently place a small piece of steel sponge at the bottom of the column and then fill the column with these helices. When assembling your apparatus, use an additional clamp to securely support the fractioning column and the distillation head. This clamp should be placed near the top third of the fractioning column. It is important to note that simple distillations tend to proceed faster than fractional distillations and have data that is more challenging to interpret. For this reason, be sure to compare notes with group members performing a fractional distillation. Each group will be given approximately 200 milliliters of their mixture of the two unknown compounds. Divide the solution into samples of 50 milliliters each and subject two samples to fractional distillation and the others to simple distillation, with each member of the group doing one distillation and then sharing the data collected. It is very important to distill the mixture at a constant rate, about one drop of distillate per second. This will require an adjustment of the heating source as the distillation proceeds. The rate of distillation will tend to slow down, necessitating a gradual increase in the heat supplied to the distilling flask over the course of the distillation. Obtaining temperature and distillate volume readings about once every one milliliter should be adequate, though taking temperature readings more often is desired when the temperature changes more rapidly. Save the first milliliter from your distillation as a separate sample in a labeled conical vial. Next, you will be collecting the rest of the first distillate, emptying the graduated cylinder as needed into a labeled beaker or flask. Continue to do so until the distillation temperature has risen to approximately 5 to 10 degrees Celsius above the apparent boiling point of the lower boiling component. Finally, finish collecting the lower boiling component by emptying the graduated cylinder into the correct labeled beaker or flask and then begin collecting the higher boiling component in the same graduated cylinder. Begin emptying the graduated cylinder into a second beaker or flask labeled for the higher boiling component and collect the second distillate until you near the last two milliliters. Collect the last milliliter separately in a labeled conical vial. It is important to always leave some liquid in the bottom of your apparatus and not boil until the round bottom is dry. The apparent boiling point of each compound is the temperature plateau observed while the liquid continues to distill. Identifying this point in the simple distillation will be more difficult than in the fractional distillation, but since the entire group has the same two unknown compounds, sharing data can be very beneficial. A list of possible unknown compounds will be given to you in the lab. Your group can make a preliminary identification of your unknowns based upon the temperature of the plateaus in your distillation curves. You will make a preliminary identification of your unknowns based on both the temperature of the plateau on your curve and those of your group members. A distillation curve consists of plotting the temperature in the distillation head versus the volume of the distillate that you have collected. In the second part of the experiment, your group will use gas chromatography to further identify the unknowns in the mixture. A gas chromatography involves running a chromatogram on each sample. Typically, a chemist would run a chromatogram on an authentic sample for comparison purposes. Fortunately, your professor has already run the authentic samples and since each compound has a characteristic retention time at certain temperatures in a particular gas chromatography column, we can use these as a reference. For identification purposes, your group should obtain a GC for the first small sample and the last small sample obtained in the conical vials during a fractional distillation. In addition, you may also want to determine the water solubility of your fractions as further evidence in the unknown identification. 
At the end of the lab, we will compare how well each distillation separated the two compounds. To do so, we will analyze the low boiling distillate and the higher boiling distillate in the beakers or flasks obtained from both a simple and a fractional distillation using gas chromatography. Thus, your group will have a total of four GCs, two for each distillation type, for comparing simple versus fractional distillation. In many cases, you will see evidence of both components of your original mixture being present in your distillate. The ratios of these two components will provide insight into the efficiency of the distillation as a means of separating the two compounds in your unknown. Be sure to obtain the retention time and an integration of the area under each peak. These areas will allow you to determine the relative amount of each compound present in your samples.